D minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire. Plus 5. When I talk about the status or watch items for an Orion or SLS build for Artemis 2, 3, or 4, but in particular for Artemis 2 and 3, there are several hardware elements and production milestones that I'm looking for. I wanted to run through some of, the, some of those hardware elements and some of the milestones that can be general indicators about the overall progress or the status of a build. In the first part, I went over some of the Orion hardware and milestones that we would expect to see or hear about during production. For SLS builds, more information and detail has been provided for the past decade or so that I've been covering the programs. Since there's more reference material to work with, in this part I'm going to look at assembly and test of the SLS booster hardware. Within the SLS program, there are several elements, sometimes called offices or projects. The boosters element is one of those offices, with Northrop Grumman the prime contractor. The boosters element encompasses the vehicle's solid rocket boosters, in particular the Block 1 and Block 1B SRBs, which are based on a design that was originally developed for the Constellation Ares 1 crew launch vehicle. The five-segment motor design makes use of a pre-existing inventory of Space Shuttle solid rocket booster hardware, which was reusable in the shuttle program. The burned-out SRBs used parachutes in shuttle for recovery in a four-segment design. For Ares-1, a five-segment design was developed as the reusable first stage of the Constellation crew launch vehicle, and two of the three full-scale development motors had already been tested at the time that Con uh, Constellation was canceled by the Obama administration in early 2010. When cancellation of Constellation was ratified in late September 2010, one of the mandates that came out of the compromise between the Obama White House and Congress was use of that five-segment motor development effort, and the design was integrated with the SLS reference design that became official a year later, essentially at the beginning of fiscal year 2012. The SLS program has enough inventory of SRB hardware for eight flight sets, along with hardware for ground testing and support. So the current booster design in production is expected to support both the Block 1 crew and Block 1B crew configurations. An upgrade in development as a part of the Booster Obsolescence and Life Extension Program, or BOLE, will take the vehicle to its Block 2 crew configuration likely sometime in the next decade. That Bolet design is still in early development, so this video will focus on assembly and test of flight hardware for the existing boosters, which will fly the next several Artemis missions, Artemis 2, 3, 4, and beyond. In general, the boosters consist of the five motor segments that are cast with solid propellant and forward and aft assembly hardware. The forward and aft assemblies include separation motors, avionics, thrust vector control systems, and hardware to attach the boosters to the SLS core stage. The 10 solid rocket motor segments for the left hand and right hand boosters, along with the exit cones, are produced by Northrop Grumman at their promontory facility in Utah, north of Salt Lake City. The motors are produced from reusable heritage hardware from the Space Shuttle program. The recovered case hardware after shuttle launches was shipped from KSC back to Promontory. This is a chart provided by Northrop Grumman of the history for the Artemis I case hardware that flew on the first SLS launch. The hardware is disassembled into the individual cylinder and dome pieces for refurbishment. Here is a high-level outline of the process that the cases go through in production, where they go from several bare metal cylinders to the five loaded solid rocket motor segments for the two boosters. Each of the five segments per booster is made up of two cylinders with the aft segment using a set of stiffened cylinders. The first step is for the metal case hardware to be stripped down to the bare metal. 
The cylinders are then mated with factory joints, which is a less complicated pin connection than the field joints that are more well known that are used to connect the motors when the boosters are stacked at Kennedy Space Center. After the cylinders are put together into a segment case, that is then painted. The next step is the installation and curing of multiple layers of propellant liner insulation on the inside of the segment. The empty segments then go to the casting pits where they are filled with their pre-mixed propellant. After the propellant solidifies and is trimmed, the now loaded segments are removed from the casting pit. They then go through NDE inspections, non-destructive evaluations of the newly cast segments. Following that, the segments go to their final assembly area where additional booster hardware is added. Here's a high level outline of that final assembly sequence. First, the weight and center of gravity of the segment is recorded. Then the systems tunnel segment is bonded to the case on the outside, of course. The igniter for the booster is installed in the forward segment and the nozzle is installed in the aft segment, the latter of which is set up in the assembly bay upside down. The exterior of the segment is cleaned and then receives a coat of white paint. The photogrammetry or reference markings are also added to the outside of the segments. Once all the inspections are complete, the segments are moved into storage buildings at Promontory where they will wait until Exploration Ground Systems needs them for launch preparations. The forward assemblies and aft skirts are assembled and tested by Northrop Grumman at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida in the booster fabrication facility there. Similarly, that hardware is refurbished from previ previously flown shuttle SRBs. This is another chart from Northrop Grumman showing the use history for the forward and aft assembly hardware. This hardware stayed in the Cape Canaveral KSC area in between flights and did the same between their final shuttle launch usage and their final usage on the expendable SLS launch vehicle. The forward assembly consists of a forward skirt, a frustum, and a nose cap. The aft skirt is a piece of an aft assembly that consists of an aft motor segment, an aft skirt, an exocone or nozzle extension, and core stage attach hardware. The structures are refurbished at Hangar AF at Cape Canaveral, now Space Force Station, um, formerly Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. The structures are similarly stripped of all their flight coatings down to the bare metal. NDE, such as X-ray, ultrasonic, and eddy current inspections of the structure are then performed. After returning to the booster fabrication facility, brackets and stiffeners are added to the shuttle hardware to reinforce the structure for the increased SLS flight loads that they'll see. Booster separation motors are another subsystem on the boosters. Each SRB has two sets of four motors, one set of four recessed into the in the frustum near the top and the other set of four on the exterior of the aft skirt at the bottom. The BSMs are produced by Northrop Grumman as well. They are prepared for installation at the BFF in an ordnance room. Here is a high level outline of aft skirt production. The first area of production on the refurbished structure is thermal protection system applications. Sheet cork Hand applied ablative and Marshall convergent coating, MCC for short, are applied to the exterior of the aft skirt and then cured in an oven. Primer and a top coat of paint are also added. In parallel with the TPS work on the aft skirt, aft skirt structure, the thrust vector control or TVC system is assembled. All the piece parts are built up and connected on frames. After the aft skirt finishes its TPS applications, it is moved into a TVC buildup cell where the TVC hardware is lifted up on those frames and over the top of the skirt and installed on the interior. The next step is installation of the aft BSMs onto the aft skirt. 
Then all the electrical cabling, uh, the wire harnesses, are installed for the TV system and for development, in, development flight instrumentation. Once everything is connected up, the aft skirt is moved to a hazardous test facility where the hydrazine for the hydraulic power units are loaded and the, hydra and the hydraulic systems are loaded with hydraulic fluid. The assembly is then hot fired, run through a full duty cycle, which includes startup of the two redundant hydraulic power units, which would occur about 28 seconds before liftoff on launch day. And then the hot fire runs all the way through the over two minutes of powered flight. After offloading the hydrazine from the HPUs, the aft skirts return to the BFF for closeouts, and then they are ready for handover to EGS. For production of the forward assemblies, after they return from hangar AF, they go through a similar set of TPS applications. The frustum is then prepared for the BSMs with the confined detonating cords and initiators set up inside, and then the BSMs themselves are installed and integrated. The nose cap is then mated to that frustum. Brackets, cabling, and avionics are integrated into the forward skirt. Then those two are mated. The nose cap frustum assembly is stacked on top of the forward skirt. The mated forward assembly is, that, is then moved to a checkout cell where ground support equipment is connected to the booster avionics, and it goes through an end-to-end -end checkout. Finally, the forward assembly goes through its closeouts before it is ready for handover to EGS. The two sets of assemblies support booster stacking operations that begin in the rotation, processing, and surge facility and finish in the vehicle assembly building. The aft skirts are transported to the RPSF at the beginning of the process for the buildup of the aft assemblies there. Eventually, those two aft assemblies are rolled into the VAB for the overall vehicle stacking process that begins with the SLS boosters. The forward assemblies are the last elements of the boosters to be stacked on the mobile launcher in the VAB. They typically roll from the BFF to the VAB after stacking of the aft assemblies and other motor segments starts. H boys on, go for engine start. H boys are on and engine starts has been okay. And all personnel, we've got engine start and we're into the plus count. All personnel, please continue to monitor your system and grasp is in control.